people shout unto God all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name and make his praise glorious. God bless you everyone. This is Daryl Elliott. Excited to come to you once again in Power Living. I pray that you and your family have had a wonderful week. And I pray that your weekend is going great as well. I want you to like, share, and subscribe to all of our channels across Ladder Rain World Outreach. The hook is Ladder Rain World. We thank you because the Lord is blessing and increasing us daily. And we want to continue to spread the love of God around the world. And we can't do it without you helping us to tell the message. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And tell everyone that we are here to share the love and goodness of the Lord. I want you to make sure you also join the Latter Rain Global Church. We are a body of believers around the world thanking the Lord for his salvation and sharing that love of God to the people of the earth. So make sure you go onto our website at rain-usa.org. Become a member. We have pastors, leaders, lay people. It doesn't matter your role in the church. We are one in the spirit and we want to reflect that in our efforts in the global church. So make sure you go to our website at rain-usa.org and you can click the tab global church and there's a form you can fill it out. Tell us a little bit about yourself and we will also add you to our continual prayer list that you might see the blessings of God. On Wednesday nights, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, we have our online virtual Bible study. The Lord is blessing us, increasing us, and we are just sharing in all of the treasures of the Word of God. And if you haven't come in yet, you're really missing something. So come on and join in with a wonderful body of believers as we share with one another all of the Word of God, and we can grow together in ways that we have not ever conceived. So click on there on our website you'll see the Bible study tab and then you'll hit the uh, you'll hit the link that comes in that says to join the meeting and when you come in during that time we'll let you in so thank you and make sure we see you then on the second and fourth Thursday evenings seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time is our sisterhood circle led by my wife Kimberly Elliott Come on in and join in. The Lord is blessing. The Lord is moving amongst the people of God. We want to make sure that you share in. You come on in and you can grow as a woman of God along with a body of believers that can share all of the things that are unique to women. And I'm understanding the Lord is really blessing these sessions. So if you are a woman in the kingdom of God, or maybe you're just searching. Just come on in. Come on in and let, let the ministry minister to you and you add to the ministry. So we look forward to you coming in on those second and fourth Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for being a partner. Thank you for blessing us. If you have not given to Latter Rain World Outreach, we uh, provide all of the codes and we provide all the opportunities for giving. Without your support, we cannot do what we do around the world. So please, share a love gift. It doesn't matter, large or small. It all matters to what we do around the world. And without your support, we can't do it. So consider being a partner with us today, a global partner. And we will pray over your gifts, pray for you. If you have a prayer request, even if you can't give a gift, Send a prayer request. We want to add you to our list. We want to pray for you and your family. And we're going to believe God with you. We're going to agree with you that he will manifest the blessings in your life as you need them. I'm going to get out the way now. We're going to have the ministry of the psalmist. And then after that, we're going to have the reading of the word of God. And then today's message. The 
Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 to 12. So let no one judge you in food or in drink, or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. Thank God for the ministry of music. I was blessed. I hope you were. Please continue to pray for those who minister the word of God through song, spoken word, all of the worship arts around the world. We thank God for that music ministry. I hope you were blessed. I sure was. And we want to continue to support them in their ministry. Well, you've heard God's word today. It's a mighty word in my spirit concerning don't let fake worship cheat you. I want you to really follow with me today because uh, a lot of us miss out on the goodness and the benefits of our relationship with God because we slip into all types of fake worship. And fake worship is easy to slip into because of our human nature. Because we are in the earth because we are of, of born in the flesh and we live in the natural world we have a tendency to lean towards things that satisfy the flesh but i want to remind you that the word of god says that god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth paul writes this letter in the book of Colossians to the church at Colossia. He writes to them to make sure that they don't slip into 
their pagan origins. He writes to them to tell them, now that you've been saved, you must now convert how you relate to God. That is really important to us because a lot of us have found ourselves over time slowly going back to things of the flesh and we're losing the power of the Spirit of God in our lives. We're missing out on what the true connection with God is. And I'm praying today that we can now reconnect at 100% power so that we might be able to show who God is. And we understand there are a few points that we need to highlight today. And I hope you, you write these down because it's really important that you check in with yourself. Check in with your relationship with God and how you are relating to God both vertically and horizontally with man so that you might be able to be the worshiper, the example that God wants you to be. So understanding that God is a, is a spirit and we must worship him in the spirit, let's talk about the things we need to avoid. First of all, we need to avoid ritualistic and idol worship. See, many times we spoil our worship, we spoil our relationship, we cheat ourselves because we fall into ritual. We fall into ritualistic things. We also add to that idols, trinkets, uh, figurines, pictures, statues. And we think by invoking these things that we actually are doing something that pleases God. God does not want you to look at things in the natural to see Him. He wants you to see Him with the eye of your spirit. He wants you to feel Him in your soul. He, he, he wants you to remove all the things around you so that you may know Him in His fullness. As long as you have a picture, as long as you have a trinket, as long as you carry out these rituals in a religious fashion, you will miss who God is. There's a barrier between you and him, and that barrier is that thing that you're looking at, that thing that you have to touch, that thing that you have to pray in front of or pray to. The Lord wants you to look to the hills from which come of your help. That's where your help comes from. In other words, look up because your salvation draws near. We know that we must remove everything so that we can see him. Because if we use something as a gateway, that thing becomes a dependency. And the Lord wants you to be dependent on only him. So as you worship God, worship him in the purity of your soul, worship him in the purity of your heart. I remember when I was uh, when I when I had an apartment and my, my first apartment, I had a balcony and I, and I, I could go out on my balcony by myself sometimes and I would just pray on the balcony and just over there to the sky and just 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 enjoy just being outside and I would just pray to God, I would worship to God, I would sing to God, not fixating myself on the sun or fixating myself on the stars. Yes, they all show the glory of God. They all show the power and the, the goodness of God. The hymn, How Great Thou Art, says that the universe displays it, but the reality is, is that they are not my way to God. No, I would just stand out there and let my spirit just be free in him and let him speak to me. And, and you can do that if you don't have a balcony. You can do it in your kitchen. You can do it in your living room. You can do it at your cubicle at work. You can do it if you work on a construction site. If you just take a moment and just bow your head. Whatever you do, just don't let anything come between. And don't feel you always need a ceremony to feel like you are touching the Lord. No, you don't. And, and I... I am involved in many ceremonies. I do consecrations. I do ordinations. I do all of those things. But none of them are the key to who God is. 
we do it as an acknowledgement. We do it as a part of, 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 of affirming things. But God, God does not need ceremony. No, God needs your heart. God needs your attention. God needs your focus. And we can't allow our robes. We can't allow our golden crosses. We can't allow the chalices and the communion set. We can't allow the table. We can't allow the pew. We can't allow anything to get in the way of seeing who God is. So I want you to make sure that you don't fall into what we like to call ritualistic and idol worship to think that you need to come in touch with the Spirit of God. The second thing he mentions in Colossians is diets. Oh yeah, certain food choices and things like that. In the book of Acts, uh, Paul was adhering to strict a dietary law and one day he saw all the crustaceans come out the sky he saw the pigs and the swine he saw the swine coming out he saw everything falling down and he 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 was disgusted and then the lord said to him don't call what god has sanctified dirty in other words i have cleansed everything it's good for you to eat go ahead and eat it now i must say this Dietary restrictions are a part of your health. So you shouldn't be eating pork every day. You should not be eating grease and butter every day. You, you should drink your water, eat good raw vegetables and fruits, and, 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 and exercise along with it, good proper sleep. Those are the keys to good health. But the point is, is that those restrictions as a means to connecting to God, are null and void. See, in the Old Testament, yes, it was put in place, but they were all images. And Paul makes light of this in the book of uh, Colossians. These were all pictures. These were all to teach us something. But once we were free from the law, and now we walk in grace, he wants you to get the essence of what he was saying. And it wasn't in what you ate. It wasn't in what you drank all along. No, no. It is in him and him alone. So, so I, I, would, I would advise that you have a good diet. I would advise that you eat healthy. I would advise that you would eat all, uh, all in moderation. I don't eat the same thing every day all the time. That's not healthy. No, I advise that you do all the things to live a healthy life but you don't attach it to your relationship with God. Ah, did you hear that? That's in relationship to yourself, but not to God. And that is the, the very important thing to understand. I don't worship God through my food. I don't worship God through, uh, uh, through uh, what I drink or whatever. No, 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 no. I eat and drink in in being able to maintain my temple. I eat and drink to be able to have good health, to try and maintain the natural things that I must maintain, but they are no way a spiritual gateway. And that is what many people use as a spiritual gateway. God is not in that anymore. No, God wants that to go by way of a means of connecting with him. He wants you to be free. He wants you to feel free. He wants you to enjoy your life and enjoy it in the presence of the Lord. And if God, if God tells you you need to stop eating something for your body's sake and your health's sake, you listen to him. But he's not going to tell you to eat this to worship me. That's the key. So, so let's bring things into balance. Let's bring things into greater understanding and better, better clarity. This is where we are in this day and age. And we want to make sure that we walk in the goodness of his spirit. Now, the next thing we need to look out for that we don't want to do to cheat ourselves is that we begin to walk in phony pious behavior. <laughs> oh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about being phony 
spiritual. We, 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 we change the way we use our voice. And we like to let everyone know that we are walking in the power and the spirit of God. We, 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 we start to change how we act. And it is pretentious. It is living a lie. Be who you are. Don't change how you present yourself as a person. Because God did not dig into your brain and take out your personality. No, <laughs> he wants to use your personality to bless people with. Just make sure you're not mean. Just make sure you're not cantankerous. Make sure that you are a reflection. Maybe you need more joy. Maybe you need more kindness. Maybe you need to do those things, but you don't sit around and build up a presentation uh, to present to others as if you are highly favored above all others. That we walk around like we are God's favorite. We walk around like God has done something so special in us that he can't do in someone else. We try to lift ourselves in places that others cannot achieve and that God despises. God is against phony, pious behavior. Your piety is achieved through a change on the inside and you begin to treat people better. You begin to have a God consciousness. You, you, you begin to walk in greater truth and integrity. But you don't manufacture a person that does not exist. And God wants you to make sure that you are walking in clarity of heart. In clarity of mind. and clarity of behavior because you're only hurting yourself because you're fooling yourself when you have to create a person that you can't even live up to. So phony pious behavior is one of the things that God hated. He did it with the Pharisees. Uh, Jesus confronted the Pharisees and Sadducees for such behavior because it said that they walked around in their regalia and they wore what was called the phylacteries on their head which which en encased the law and they they sat around uh presenting as if they were closer to god and that the others did not have a chance to get close to god and jesus came rebuking them for such behavior because in there is inherent hypocrisy and we know how god feels about hypocrisy. Just read the Gospels. Jesus, he could always have good relationship with the sinner, but who he could never get along with was the hypocrite. So God wants you to be clean. God wants you to be authentic. God wants you to be you. And if you do that, you're going to see great things. You're going to live a better life and others will have more grace upon you when you need someone to lift you up. And the last thing you have to remember is with that piety comes the imposition of rules and regulations on others. See, see, another way you cheat yourself is that you become, and you may have heard me say this one time before, you may become the God police. You may become the righteous enforcers. That, 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 that God did not, God did not call us to impose rules and regulations on others. No, God called us to share the good news, to share the gospel. Uh, we, we must know that the better way to win the world is to tell the world how we were won. <laughs> the better way to win others is to show others that you believe. The better way to show someone the way is to walk in the way yourself and give grace to somebody else who's struggling. But 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 we, we see many times we want to always impose on others. But in the book of Colossians, Paul tells the people, don't allow people to impose all these rules upon you because they are cheating you. And you must know what freedom is. 
Freedom in the Lord, freedom in Christ, and freedom allows you to be yourself and let others be themselves and let them grow within themselves in the grace of the Lord. And when we let people be who they are and let them grow and let all of the barnacles fall off, you're going to get a great disciple. And we must remember that we are not here to impose rules and regulations. No, at the judgment, there will be judgment. But we're not in the judgment today. Today we are in grace. And as we're in grace, we want to bring everybody in before the judgment. And that's the key. We are in a race against time. We want to hurry up and tell somebody, come to Jesus right now. Don't waste time. That's our message. It should be, well, you know you shouldn't be doing this, and you know you shouldn't be doing that. That is not what we're here for today. What we're here for right now is to tell somebody how good God is. And let's make sure that we are sharing love and we are giving grace in this season and in this hour. And to that point, if you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sins, I'm telling you, run through the door today. Come to him. Let him be your comforter. Let that grace come upon you. Come as you are. Be who you are. And let him come and work with you as he made you. And then you will be refashioned into something that you never thought you would be. And you will love it because God does all things well. The Lord loves you. So if you will, please pray this prayer with me today. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I confess my sins. Please wash me. Cleanse me. Make me brand new. I give myself to you, and I will follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you can be sure that you are part of God's family. I want you to write us. Go to our website, and under prayer requests, let us know that you gave your life to the Lord. We want to celebrate with you. We want to see you be who God wants you to be, and we will rejoice and pray with you. If you want to send us a request, we would love to pray for you. Thank you so much. If you are a member of the Latter Rain Global Church, thank you for your faithful tithes, offerings, and service. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to consider partnering with Latter Rain World Outreach if you're not currently a partner. And we look forward to you connecting with us in the days to come. Well, this is Daryl Elliott. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I pray that you enjoy the Lord. Don't forget, we're now in the holy season, and we're coming, racing towards Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. We have Palm Sunday coming up, and we want you to be blessed in the Lord. Till next time, I want to see you in power living, and we'll see you then. God bless.